Kia ora koutou kato iho ma, no mai, hara mai, kita papa tako or stay in me always, bringing it to your organic, live and dynamic. Now bring me your cups, one moment, cheers, and let's dip into the healing well. <laughs> It's level two in New Zealand. We went to level two as of Wednesday this week. So everybody is out and about celebrating in a sense um, in the form of the fact that we can actually leave the residence for an extra period amount of time, um, extended amount of time, and we can actually go and get a decent cup of coffee. So cheers to that. But before we get stuck into the show, which we will be talking about relationships, um, I just want to say, hey, how's it going? Um, Anmi, how's it going over there in the Gold Coast? Uh, well, the Gold Coast is uh, like utopia, really. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very free, but uh, the, in, in New South Wales, just 20 kilometers from where I am, it's uh, still locked down until Monday, and then they will release the lockdown, and there will be a bubble between the border as well because there's been a lot of drama with children stuck at the grandparents not being able to return home and um, yes lots of craziness unnecessarily uh, in in my opinion but anyways monday there is an end to that so happy days okay fantastic and um it's probably to an extent over here in new zealand as well um doesn't sound as um hard um, in terms of um, the border security and how they've actually stipulated that. But um, with Auckland, where Auckland is still in a level four lockdown and the remainder of the country surrounding the Auckland borders or Auckland region is in level two. So um, I can totally understand um, and empathise and sympathise with what you're saying there. And um, TZ Created, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, eh? I uh, haven't been up to much um, except for my website um just writing a new program called i'm not telling <laughs> and, and just doing new music for my new ep that's coming up uh first of november senses are lenses and there's a whole lot of new music amazing music on that um yeah but good to be with you too again kupu ho for the show love it is is bienvenida fantastic well actually in saying that it's been a, um, a few days since we last um, came together so i'm very excited that we're back together as a group to continue on our um our series that we have obviously we started with handles of hope well, let's continue on with that because ultimately that's exactly what we want to do is we want to bring hope, we want to bring aspiration, we want to bring happiness and uh, we want to help everybody to understand and figure out from an emotional wellness and a mental well-being side of things um, what we can do to assist you in terms of your life going forward. So what we thought we would do today is talk about a continuation of our last show, which was about relationships ships and daggers Ugh! daggers literally but now we want the, the happy side of things and um, we're going to talk about r and r in relationships so um yeah let's kick it off on me again as usual i'd love to hear your feedback um about stability so what does stability in a relationship mean for you um stability doesn't necessarily mean not moving um, it would mean that I feel really harmonious, relaxed while I am doing what I usually do. And when I would tell you my day, you would think this woman is crazy <laughs> because I wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and I do a lot of things. But feeling secure and stable in a relationship is that you know you can count on your partner. And regardless what happens in the day, um, because my husband runs his business and I run my business and then we have like multiple things happening uh, that we do together as well. Um, and obviously, as you know, life is not just a smooth ride. Um, it's, um, you know, things come up and if you work with other people, um, it's, people are not all going to be of your opinion. There is going to be 
things you don't agree on and you will have to kind of find a solution for it and sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees so to have a good stable relationship you can pick up the phone and you know have that partner as a sounding board so that's what we do we have really open communication that also contributes to stability and i also I say that a lot to my clients like when they first start to pick a partner and you want to experience harmony i would say make sure that you can have open communication about anything and everything there are no subjects that you can't talk about Okay, maybe not a good thing to do that on the first date, but um, at least make, make it very clear that you are a person that likes to put their cards on the table and that you like to discuss everything and not just like the surface, go really, really deep into it because there is nothing worse that takes the safety aspect away in a relationship. Like for example, when you need to walk on eggshells, um, before you can talk about something or you need to be in a certain atmosphere or wait till the other person is in a certain mindset or mood before you can bring things up, already the momentum has gone and you have already, uh, you know, like taken that on board and that can create uh, a physical disease over time. And I like the fact that you uh, put out there, um, you know, putting your cards on the table right from the outset, obviously um, not to the initial first date, but it makes absolute sense. And that just resonates with me when I look back at my life in terms of how I dealt with relationships and, um, you know, leading up to this far. Um, man, if I had some somewhere like this um, platform or an opportunity to hear different ways in terms of advice, then, man, my life would, look, <laughs> would have looked very different. But, um, yeah totally understand what you're saying and TZ created for you same question um, what does stability mean for you in a relationship yeah I, I, I usually have a tendency to agree with Anmi um, I'm gonna go out on a limb here uh, this time and and it's not it's not exactly different or me digressing it's just a different perspective in terms of my personal um, relationships and so, so with my partner, um, it's understanding, similar to what Anmi said, it's understanding that no matter what you go through, you're going to have each other's back. And regardless of what the picture looks like in front of you, you're going to go through it together. And I think that's where the stability comes. And then as you do that over time, you get more and more, your relationship gets more and more stable because it, uh, people have this distorted perception or viewpoint that now nah, we want this to be roses. And as, as Anmi alluded to uh, previously in, in her recollection and her anecdotes, it's not going to be like that. You know? The sea is not always going to be flat as a pancake. Some days there's going to be massive swells. Some days you're going to be in the roaring 40s, as they call it, down in Antarctica, where, you're, where the, the waves are so high, they're just engulfing your ship. And so regardless of what you go through, like you really need to pick a partner who can, who can stay the storm, man, because people pick flakes and they can't handle the weather. You know, They can't handle the stress. They can't handle the conundrums. They just can't handle anything that's above their, well, you know, without being disrespectful, anything that's above their pay grade. And ultimately, it's, that's, that's really where the worth of somebody comes down. Well, what the worth of somebody comes down to is, can they handle, anybody can be there when it's all sunshine and roses, you know, but can you be there when there's a war to go through, you know? What will you do? Will you walk through that war for the person that you're with? Do you know they're going to have your back and walk through that war with you? Um, and just all the all the ebbs and flows of life, and you really got to you really got to pick somebody who can do that, who can through hell or high water, so to speak. Yeah. And you know what? It sounds like um, 
Are you sure you weren't there with my past relationships? Because um, it sounded like you knew exactly what I was going through from the um, past. Don't laugh. Um, but the reality is, is when you actually look at your life, it's great that you can reflect because that's the whole point of um, why we're here. It's about learning. It's about understanding exactly, you know, where you can go is the direction that you can move in. It's about being able to alter and change your trajectory and your and your path. And it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in a professional capacity. It could also be in a, um, a relationship capacity, but it can also be in terms of just day-to-day -day learning. So for me, you know, looking at stability, stability literally means to me is that you've got something grounded. Does it actually mean that it's going to stay grounded? No, absolutely not. And from past experiences, that's where I've learned over time that for me, stability is about, and I agree with both on me and TZ. It's about having somebody there that can support you on every single facet that you can possibly, um, you know, think of and immerse yourself in from an emotional, from our momentum brushes that we talk about on a daily, weekly basis. You know, can they actually be there for the small things where I'm going to wake up one day and not feel 100%, 100% and look at myself in the mirror and go, man. And you women out there will know and absolutely resonate with me when I say this. I look like shit. And no matter what you do, whether you put your makeup on, you straighten your hair, no matter what clothes you wear, you're going to constantly feel that way. And you want a partner there to actually support you through that process. And to us, it's massive, but to them, it may seem something small. But on the other side, it's actually dealing with all the situations where you may have financial situations arise. You may have um, family circumstances where, you know what, that family member doesn't like your partner. So then you're battling between each other. So it goes from one scale to the other. And it's actually having somebody that can support you throughout through thick and thin, just like TZ said. Um, and it's the things like the words that they say, just being there and listening. Um, it's being able to be available at the time when you request them. I'm not saying you have to be there every single moment of, of every single um, situation that arrives, but it's just the fact that you can actually be there to be um, present and actually help them through the situation at the time. So, you know, there's three different aspects in terms of what stability means, and that will mean absolutely something different to every single individual, but it gives you a bit of a perspective at three different levels in terms of what that could look like and what that could possibly mean. So what does that mean in terms of, you know, relationship R&R? &R? When I say relationship R&R, &R, it's that rest and relaxation of relationships on the other side where you're enjoying each other's company, you're enjoying the circumstance, you're enjoying being in present in that moment. Um, and what comes with being able to get to that point is security. So Anmi, for you, I know you deal with um, a lot of clients um, a lot of people, friends, family around um, security. So, you know, what's your advice when you're giving people an understanding of security in a relationship? Um, the excellent question, but I can take it in any direction here as well. Um, I think being mindful of the situation that you are in, and I'm going to pick a client that I'm working with today. Uh, I mean, not today, but currently one of my clients and uh, she's from Europe and it um, doesn't really matter. I guess that happens everywhere and anywhere in the world. So that's why I take an example to say you're not alone. Even people in Europe deal with this. Um, so she uh, met somebody online about 10 years ago, I believe. And then uh, she knew this was not really the partner for her, but she did have a child with him. And then she was very um, exhausted and there was not much input from his side. She felt like a burnout was coming, but kept going, kept going. Then they were on the verge of splitting up and then COVID hit. So, ooh, you know, like uh, there was all of a sudden that the family unit cannot split up. So uh, at the beginning of COVID, obviously they were locked in the same house. There were not, there was surprisingly not much uh, drama. And then she decided to, uh, she wanted another child. 
And she said, I knew that was not the right thing to do, but I did it anyways. So, and I said to her, why are you hiring me as a coach? Because you can see your, not mistakes, because a child is never a mistake. It's a gift. And, um, you know, when, when, when that comes into your energy, you, you do whatever you think is the best thing to do, right? Nobody's going to, to act out of uh, being nasty because that's we human beings, we act at the best possible way we can at the time. So um, she said, yeah, I can see what, uh, you know, like where I kind of like forced things. And so you need to know something. Usually when you force things, you end up in situations that you don't really want to be in. So being mindful and, and asking yourself the question, sometimes when you have a crossroad in a relationship uh, or relationships, this is applicable to romantic relationships, business relationships, friendship relationships, the relationship you have with yourself when you need to make a decision. That is, is this the best possible outcome or the best possible step for me? And, and ask for, for help not from anyone else, but ask to be led. And, and something is going to happen. It might be you walk into somebody in the coffee shop the next day that tells you a story and you think, whoa, okay, that was something I needed to hear. Or you, somebody is going to give you a book or you're going to watch a documentary that's going to really make you think. And then you think, okay, this is the green light or this is the red light. So mindfulness and observing your own behavior and your the, the 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 signs around you before diving headfirst into something that then later on you think why did did I do this why <laughs> yeah yeah actually uh, I'm now thinking back and <laughs> reflecting on different circumstances that I've been in and I can definitely say there was things that I knew were not the right thing to do at the time but unfortunately I, I, I followed through with um, and you, you're right you've really got to sit back and actually stop yourself and reflect um, to ensure that you're you are doing the right thing so yeah I totally resonate with what you're saying um, on me. Um, Tizi what about you in terms of security what does that mean for you in a relationship? Oh look I've just been percolating on the first question stability um, and again, I'm going to take this back to the first seven years of a person's life. So it's actually standards first, then you get the stability, and then you get the security. So whoever's raising you, whatever standards they teach you to agree with, that's how you're going to see yourself, and that's where you're going to evaluate your worth unfortunately and so if they don't teach you that your worth is high then your expectations will be as high as you think your worth is and then so what's going to happen is you're going to end up in relationships with low expectations of your your prospective partner because that's what you've been taught the standards are and so the higher the standards that you get conveyed, conveyed to you when you're little and therefore that translates into your self-worth, that's actually what you're going to let happen to you because if you've got high standards, well, then you're not going to settle for anything less than that. And then from there, if you've got really high standards, then that's where stability, that your standards will, will translate directly into stability and then your stability, because of your high standards and you're operating with a person who has equally high standards and values you because of their standards, that directly translates into stability because you've got two people operating at a high standard. They have both have high expectations and so they just acquiesce with one another. Then you get the stability from that. So you've got two people who have high self-worth because of the standards that they've been taught about and so they don't settle for anything less but the standards of worth that they've been taught to have for themselves. And then it translates over into stability because you're both working for each other and then the security comes and so I, I, um, I see this uh, pictorial or this analogy. 
So you're putting up a big, huge mast. You can't, you, you, you put a concrete foundation underneath it and it's like a big antenna like the Eiffel Tower. And then once that starts flapping in the wind, well, then you need some guy wires to secure it. And so that's, the, that. to me, that's what, what uh, represents the security of the, is these guy wires that are, that are holding this big, huge mast or this big antenna. And when, when the big storm comes, well, you've got to secure it down with some, like, tent, uh, tent ropes because that's what stabilizes the tent in a, in a storm. So, yeah, so it's standards, stability, and then security because once you've got all those things, there's not going to be, nothing's going to be flapping in the wind, so to speak, and, and you'll be really secure in your relationship. And again, I agree with both exactly what you both are saying. Um, and you know what, um, I, with for security for myself, and actually maybe I should have said security first and then stability second, um, but security for me, and, and just talking to a lot of people, they think security is based on finances, um, but actually it's not, and that's where um, the misillusion and misunderstanding comes into play here because a lot of people actually go into a lot of relationships and is this a generalization potentially but I've spoken to a few people and they've given me the same feedback and you know what at some point too and to a degree I also um, looked at security from a financial um, perception so it's going into a relationship thinking that you have to be secure in terms of you know stability around your finances so that you feel then stable to be in that relationship and that's where I think we need to then really re-look at the understanding hence why we're doing that today what the difference is between stability and security so security can mean totally different things it's not just about financial stability although for a lot of people that's exactly what they look at in terms of what security means um, for me it's never been an issue because I've been a very um, strong, independent female, being a single mother. Not anymore, thank goodness. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. But the fact is being there and knowing how hard it is, the sacrifices, the choices in terms of knowing that you've got to put yourself first to ensure the family gets fed, you will always look at um, the monetary side of your situation and ensure that if you enter into a relationship, you know, can that other person provide? Because ultimately it's not just one individual. There's multiple individuals that you need to feed and house, etc. cetera. Um, but what we do need to stop doing is looking at security from that financial basis. It is definitely a part of it, but it doesn't mean that that's the reason why you enter into a relationship. It's knowing that security is, again, ties hand in hand for me around stability, knowing that someone is going to be able to support you on all facets and all areas, whether it is, yes, financially, but it's also about from a, an emotional perspective. It's also from a standpoint of being a parent where if I say something and that's what I say, um, is that person going to back me up and ensure that they follow through with the message that I'm trying to deliver? Or are they actually going to turn around and say, no, I don't disagree. I actually disagree with what you're saying. So that's where the imbalance comes from, and also that instability. So you know, again, it's it covers so many different areas. Um, security also means to me, again, is that person going to actually be secure in our relationship, knowing that if I go out to the pubs, if I go out the girls, if I go out just to have a couple of drinks with work colleagues, are they actually going to support me knowing I'm going there for the right purpose and the right reasons? And when I return home, are they going to feel secure and knowing that in our relationship that there's actually no, um, and I suppose the word is insecurity, but being secure around the fact that, yes, I 100% um, support what you're doing, why you're going there, and when you come home, it's going to be as normal when you first left. Um, I don't know for you um, and me in terms of feedback around um, those kinds of circumstances with, you know, insecurity. Not that we're focusing on that, but again, it works hand in hand with what we're talking about. And I suppose too, when you have circumstances where, you know, you've got, let's just make this really simple, 
you've got a female that's a model that looks amazing she's beautiful and then you've got somebody on this side that possibly is an accountant and I'm using this as an example just so it's very clear and that maybe they're not as um, adventurous they're not as out there like what sort of advice can you give to help each other to realize that we've got two different people two different personalities but how can you work together as a, a relationship, as a partnership, to ensure that there's that security around one another? And what are the things that you can do? So, very excellent question, because you see that a lot. And uh, about the, the model and the accountant, excellent, excellent. I actually have somebody in mind. Um, <laughs> so, first of all, and uh, actually I was working on this with another client, and I wrote it down and we were talking about qualities of a lasting relationship. So that's just the qualities and that is respect for each other. So if the accountant says, oh yeah, you're just doing modeling, you just have to be pretty and you just have to take pictures. And then she says, oh, you have a boring job working with numbers. There is no respect and admiration. So there needs to be admiration towards so the man perhaps for the woman that um, you know it looks good physically but also not necessarily everyone who looks good physically can deliver amazing pictures so that is that is an art yeah so she's actually I don't see her as a model but she's an artist and he's an artist with numbers so there needs to be an exchange of um, admiration for each other that is very important then second one was honesty so if you go out for a drink or i'm sure the accountant goes out for a drink uh, with the workmates on friday that's quite normal here in australia but if you know that you can trust the person there is absolutely no issue with going out now i'm not a huge fan of um people going out as singles you know like i go out with the boys you go out with the girls uh, or or you know these kind of things we i don't do that in my marriage um, now, my husband works sometimes on projects like 12 hours, like yesterday, for example. He finished at 6 p.m. from 6 a.m. And he said, I'm going to go to the sauna and going to a magnesium do a magnesium bath and a, in a jacuzzi and, a, and, you know, like a steam room and it's in, together with the boys. And I thought, knock yourself out and then you come home really relaxed, which is really good for me. And yes, they had a beer, I think, in the jacuzzi, but... I mean, that's good, that's male bonding after work, but this is not getting absolutely, I, I don't like this word, but in Australia, this is a very common uh, thing. Yeah, let's get pissed. Blind, let's get blind. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, uh, to me, like, I cannot stay more than 20 minutes in these kind of situations because that's far, um, I'm not going to say below, but definitely far away from my vibration level because I want to preserve my brain. I know that my brain is very valuable for me to have a, a, a clean mind and to move forward in life and to have a vision and to keep my businesses run properly because um, if, if I put too much alcohol in my body, that's if eventually going to affect my brain people don't think about this but alcohol drugs all that it really if you if you can do a brain scan and you can see what it does to your brain you would not ever touch that right but no one teaches you that at school okay going back to lasting relationships kindness kindness is so important the way you speak to each other uh, sometimes we are not aware of that because um you know, when we uh, when we speak, sometimes we are a bit snappy because we are tired. But be aware that you are you speak in a kind way and that you don't you know bite off the nose of your partner or your children or whomever you're talking to. Um, so honesty and trust, yeah, that goes together. So if there is transparency, honesty, good communication, then honestly. I, I don't care. You feel that. You feel. Because if you have a slight... Um, okay, this, this is actually very interesting because this is a double-edged sword. Some people say, um, oh, I don't trust my partner. Nine out of ten is, that is the reason because they cannot be trusted. Um, if this is a constant thing, now if it's your intuition telling you something is off, Usually that is the case. 
but it might not necessarily be a bad thing. Maybe they just had a flat tire and when you just communicate properly, you're going to get, you know, the answer to your question and you go, okay, right? Because I've seen people go absolute ape shit over nothing and then I'm like, calm down, nothing happened. But that's then managing your emotions. So, so many things to talk about. And then, um, so admiration is very important. I talked about that in the beginning. And forgiveness. Forgiveness, in case something goes wrong, you need to forgive each other and you need to forgive yourself. And once you can do that and you work, uh, you know, work that out, even though there is differences, uh, there needs to be also a willingness to understand each other. Because I always say, but in a couple, the communication is like a game of tennis, right? So everyone has a tool, which is the racket, and then a uh, tool is the language, and how you speak, and the manner in which you speak, and the kindness, and the trust, and the open communication you put into it. And the ball is the message. So you want to communicate as clearly as possible, yeah, so that the ball can be hit back over the net. And yeah, then absolutely. It's super important. And that, in combination with initially when the model meets the accountant, they need to sit down and they need to write down their values. And if there is a discrepancy in the main five values, honestly, don't even bother going into a relationship. Because it, for me, the biggest thing that I do with new, fresh couples is we do a value alignment, a value assessment, and I can immediately see where, you know, like where the problem is. And some things can't, you can't fix. Because if one wants to live in a van and the other one wants to live in a $5 million uh, multi-whatever mansion, that's never going to work. Do you know? Yeah. Some great advice. I love the, um, the key points, and especially um, bringing up the point about doing things as a partnership and not um, doing things separately. Uh, and you were able to really articulate to a point where um, your partner um, ultimately was doing his momentum brushes, um, the things that were, were, were um, aiding him and supporting him and helping him based on the current day that he was was going through. Um, and, and for me, look, we've all lived in Australia, Teasy's lived in Oz, I've lived in Australia, and I, I absolutely understand that culture. And, um, you know, living now back in New Zealand, it is so different. And, you know, the way that you live over there is, is um, has its positives, the weather, um, but then it has its downfall because of ultimately it's an inbred culture, unfortunately, whereas when you come back to New Zealand, it's also an inbred culture. Is that is that a positive in, in comparison to Australia? It's just different, but again, it's how you actually understand and then use it moving forward. Um, TZ, for you, the, the same thing, you know, insecurities obviously um, will definitely play a part in terms of relationships and, and the perfect example, and I know you've been around supermodels and um, you, you know, clearly understand um, and decipher the difference between, you know, the model and the accountant. So what's your perspective and your school? Yeah, well, you know, I've actually been a model, uh, a runway model, um, a legit one too. Um, so, you know, walkways and all that. And yeah, being around supermodels, um, the likes of, man, uh, well, Miranda Kerr um, in Australia, and then a couple, their names elude me now, uh, especially when I was in London, and then New York, uh, a guy called Tyson Beckford, uh, who was, uh, I guess, an associate, but that's from being in the music industry, you know, going back 10 years now. And I can tell you this um, for a fact, all the big stars, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter how famous they are, doesn't matter if they're world champion or not, because I, I know a couple of Formula One drivers and they've been world champions at different times. Um, and everybody goes through the same thing, man. Um, jealousy does not discriminate against anybody. You see these Emirates skills in Dubai, um, and to the eye they look stunning, and you think, wow, they must be super confident. 
and they they have, they have the same issues that everybody else has. Um, yeah, jealousy, insecurity. It does not discriminate me, and everybody goes through it um, for for one reason or another. And I think um, I think when it comes to standards again, self worth again. If you're raised to have high standards and have a huge self worth, am I saying think more than than you actually are? Not, but just like especially with females, um, our men, we really need to um, to be more uh, affectionate with our females and and be more transparent especially with our, our, our young females as we're raising them and teach them what the standards are, teach them how they should be getting treated. And then later on in life, because they have those standards instilled and, and, and imparted in them, then they don't end up having insecurity problems because they know their worth. And I think that's what it comes down to. It's actually knowing your worth and, and, and knowing it in a way where you're secure in your identity, who you are, but it doesn't make you arrogant and narcissistic either. And yeah, with the music industry, and then I've, I've, I've been an actor as well, and I'm getting back into acting um, back here in New Zealand. No one is immune to it. No one. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how good looking you are, because ultimately it, dep it comes down to this one important factor, and that's do you derive your self-worth from other people's likes on your pictures? Do you derive your self-worth from people giving you commendations or do you actually have it inside of you and do you know what your worth is? And that's what it comes down to. And I think that gets instilled in us when we're little kids from, from the age of zero to seven. And then that sets the platform because it's all about psychology. What is your self-worth? How do you know that? Oh, because my grandfather uh, taught me this or my dad taught me this or my mum taught me this. So, so again, it comes down to psychology. Totally agree. Totally agree with everything that you're both saying. Um, and, and that's the whole, I suppose when I look at it again, it's a reflection back. And that's the whole point as to why we're here is that there's an opportunity for you to really immerse and understand if there's any gaps in the way that you're perceiving things or looking at situations. You've got so many different um, perspectives where you can sit and reflect on your past but also what you can do moving forward into the future. And, you know, I've been across so many different relationships where, you know what, I was insecure. And a lot of that insecurity was based on their behaviours. And like you said, Unme, it was that, um, that sense. I immediately sensed something was not quite right. Whether I was correct in the exact sense that I was thinking, the fact of the matter was there was something that I knew wasn't 100%. And we had spoken across different um, different times and different topics within the shows about using your senses because ultimately they they will actually give you the answers to what you're thinking. Absolutely. Whether, whether it's a hundred percent right, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is there's that that unction, there's that urge, there's something there that means you need to actually look a little bit further, maybe dig a little bit deeper, because ultimately there's a reason why you're feeling that way. And is that the your spiritual realm telling you? Is that your um, your womb, <laughs> what's happening inside, telling you? You know what? It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is you're actually thinking it and you're feeling it, so it's really important that you act on it. Um, man, I could keep going on and on and on, and on about this, but um, <laughs> um, again, this is me getting really like passionate about everything that we talk about. Um, but one area that I want to talk about, because also this is what happens in relationships, and again, I'm going to use my own experience, is that, you know, and me, I'm, I'm going to throw this out to you, um, you're going to have a lot of people, you know, coming to you and you, you've had the experience and I've even had the experience of talking to my girlfriends where, you know, you might have days where, oh my gosh, it was amazing. My relationship has been great for like one, two, three, four days and then boom, boom, boom <laughs> something's happened and then all of a sudden everything goes kind of downhill, you know. And we have a tendency, and I don't know why this is, but you go, I can count on my hand. You know, one, two, three, four days. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, 
day four, five, six, just <laughs> hasn't worked, and then all of a sudden you see this grading of you know your highs and your lows. Does that actually mean, and me, that you're in trouble? Oh, definitely not. Uh, this is just called life, and it's like you know, like emotions. They come and they go. Imagine if you don't experience any emotions, that means you're dead, yeah? So when somebody's heartbeat and you have this like, you know, monitor and you can see beep and nothing happens. Very nice. It's exactly like that, right? So you need to see bleep, 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 yeah? <laughs> So up and down, this is very important, otherwise you are dead. So somebody who says uh, that there is never any issues in their relationship, that is absolute rubbish. Um, I do know people who have like a really harmonious relationship and there is, this is something that I've noticed in the couples that I work with. In the beginning, they have heated discussions and, you know, it gets really out of control. But that is just because nobody ever taught them how to deal with their emotions. Like how to communicate when you experience an, an emotional outburst. And once you know how to master your feelings, <laughs> you, you will not do that again. Because do you know that somebody who needs to scream, if you need to scream it's a sign of weakness so it's actually uh, I think I told you guys this before my dad always said if you need to raise your voice you have already lost your argument and I will I will always remember that because screaming is a sign of weakness is a sign of like um, going in in uh, in, in like uh, animal mode you know because look at cats and dogs fighting they are not just sitting there cute and woof, you know, no, they're like, you know, like, uh, so this is exactly what, what, what humans, I mean, we are animals too, but we're animals who are more or less in control of our, I mean, mastering ourselves, let's hope, yeah. So um, you can learn that, you can learn how to uh, communicate properly in when there is an issue, like really sit down, put your cards on the table and say, this is the issue, how are we going to find a solution? And I do that in my relationships. I've done that with corporate, um, in corporate settings. Uh, I don't believe in screaming at each other and, and, and high emotions. There will be emotions. And it's not about being right. Because being right all comes back down to being worthy. Right? Because TZ was talking about that before. So many people believe that... Um, if they, if they can bring their point across by screaming and yelling and the other person is then going to say, yes, you are right. Ah, okay, see, I am worthy and you are not. But what you need to see, it's not a competition. We, it's, it's not about being uh, right, it's about being happy. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, and that is something that many couples don't understand. But then when I explain it this way, they're like, oh, yeah, this is actually a good point. But when you learn to, to um, deal with your own emotions, because what brings a stable relationship or like a safe relationship ultimately is you knowing the self. If you know yourself and yes, you, you know your values and you know your standards, then behavior from other people that you allow will continue however if you say oh hang on you have crossed the line and i think tom cruise was uh, once in an interview and he said now you have crossed the line but this is a very good uh, sentence to remember to remind people that step over the line to say excuse me just a moment may i respectfully point out that you've just crossed the line and then silence and then just let it be and then maybe they ask you to explain yourself so you can do that as well in a relationship that there, there is no swearing there is no name calling there is no throwing of anything there is no screaming because that is very animalistic behavior and it's 2021 ladies and gentlemen so we should have evolved further than screaming yeah. and yelling and throwing things yeah i totally agree sometimes i but in saying that, um, yeah, you, you actually bring a lot of valid points um, to the table. Um, and like, I suppose for you, TZ, as well, it's the same question, but I'm going to slightly change it. 
uh, by saying, you know, if you have those ups and those downs, those peaks and those troughs in a relationship, does that actually mean that when you are in those troughs that your partner doesn't love you? What, what do you think? Nah, I don't think that, uh, especially not now. Um, I think all the points that Anmi brought up previously, uh, forgiveness, understanding, communication. And so really it's about, it comes down to the backbone of any relationship is communication. And that's the backbone to the skeleton. And then I think, you know, we, we get to the ribs and where they start branching out. I think that's where the understanding starts. And so you really got to, uh, again, you know, I keep bringing it back to psychology. You got to understand how people interpret stuff. I know for me and my partner, she misinterprets me based on her previous experience with other people's body language. And so what I'm learning to do is actually adjust my body language and adjust my tone and adjust even the words that I say and try and line up more with her so that we don't have those uh, moments of conflict because obviously Anmi hit it right on the head. It's not about being wrong or right. And I'm not a wrong or right person. I don't really care about being wrong or right. I just care about us finding a mechanism or a solution that works and contributes to our happiness. And I've never been a wrong or right person because I don't care about that. I care about being happy. Yeah. So understanding each other, breaking it right down if you have to into single words. What does this word mean? And a lot of people go, what? Is it? This, one of the major problems in society is that people don't listen. That's why we have two ears and one mouth. And then when people do listen, they're not even understanding what the person is actually saying. And so you actually got to break it down and slice it. And what I mean by slicing it is like get a cake, get a pizza, get bread. You know, you're not going to grab that whole pizza, roll it up and chuck it in your mouth. You're going to slice it up. And the whole point about slicing it, when you slice bread, you can see the cross section of it. And so because you can see the cross section of the bread, you can actually see all the ingredients that are in it. And that's the point of slicing it. So when you're slicing conversation, you're breaking it down into all its little ingredients that go into the communication. And then once you start reading each other and getting to know each other and understanding what each other means with interpretations and conveying a message to each other, that understanding just makes your life so much easier because then it because then your understanding starts becoming tacit. You'll just look at each other, or you do little mannerisms, little body languages, gesticulations, and you just start getting each other. And and, and you really don't even have to talk um, unless you got a partner who just likes talking. Be honest, you can do it too, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, actually, um, valid points um, from, from every angle and every aspect. And, you know, if you'd ask me the same question, um, there's going to be peaks and troughs. And again, I'm going from my past experience. Have I had a lot of experience? Yeah, actually I have, even though they're not short ones. They've actually been quite long instances. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't love somebody when you're in that trough, but it just means that at that point in time, there was a misunderstanding or a miscommunication. And it's actually perfectly okay to have ups and downs. You are going to have situations where it's not going to be, as you would deem, roses and rainbows and butterflies every single day. Is that actually possible? You know what? I haven't come across that. There's been definite situations in my life where there's been days where it's been amazing, but it doesn't mean that um, you know things are not going to go south because ultimately it doesn't matter. You can't control the other individual. You can't control how they're going to behave, what they're going to say and what they're going to do. But what you can do from my end, and you know what? It's not even looking at it from a personal um, intimate relationship, but even from a business relationship, it's actually just stopping in your tracks and listening and understanding what the other individual is saying so that you can be clear about what it is that you're actually needing to do from your point of view 
Um, do you always have to be that one making all the changes? No, but if you love that individual and you can see that maybe they need something from you where you may need to change a the way that you talk or the types of words or your body language, does it actually matter that you make that slight deviation? Well, in my eyes, it absolutely doesn't. And I'm sure, I mean, you would absolutely agree with me on that one. <laughs> 100% Jamie and you know sometimes when there is like a heavy argument or, or like not something that bothers you sometimes it's good to take a day a day for him a day for and we don't speak to each other and then you have time to think and then but address it don't let it go from one day to two days to two weeks to three weeks and then people are like I haven't spoken to him for three weeks why not you know life is short make up my grandmother always say before you go to sleep, you need to make up. Never go to sleep angry because it's very bad for your energy. And I thought, oh, that's a good point. But if you really need to take that 24 hours, take that 24 hours, but don't let it escalate. And don't, you know, like, because some people, they stonewall people. And that is like, I'm not talking to you. And, you know, the cold shoulder, that's absolutely not necessary because you've chosen this man or this woman to have been in a long-term relationship with, not to do this kind, because this is actually bad energy. Totally agree. I have a tendency where, um, and it's, it's purely just my own emotions and trying to calm myself so I can actually think rationally, and I've spoken about this in my Momentum Brush um, episodes, is um, I actually will stop the conversation, purely not because I... Um, feel as though I don't want to discuss it anymore but I know at that point in time if it continues I myself personally will react and I don't want to react to then give the wrong impression or give the wrong answer and then my body language will ultimately stipulate my emotion so I'll, I'll end the conversation there's the agreement where if I end it then he, um, he knows um, that it's purely me and just wanting to take the time to then reflect but we always then revisit it um, within a time frame and you know what ultimately and I'm sure I mean you'll agree Tizi you'll agree makeup sex is wonderful I'm just saying yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> oh, maybe I should scrap more than... <laughs> sorry Tizi what was that I said maybe I should scrap more than <laughs> I'm just joking. Maybe. Who knows? Not that we're endorsing that at all. But um, maybe that's the cue to end it there. Ultimately, um, yeah, look, um, relationships um, are roller coasters, but it doesn't necessarily mean at the end of the day that when you are having a point of difference or miscommunication or misunderstanding that, um, you know, either partner doesn't love each other and that it's, it's at an end. It just means that you're at a point where you are crossroads where you just need to, to sit down and work it out ultimately together as a partnership, as a team to then support each other. Um, one of my momentum brushes that I actually did today was um, I actually vented it out with my girls and I have made the decision to myself to start reading more because ultimately it's always been a goal of mine. I'm not an avid reader. reader. Um, I'm so busy. I feel so much um, with my day with activities that I thought, no, I need the time to read. And I actually went and picked up this book from the shop called um, She Is Not Your Rehab by Matt Brown. So I'm actually going to read that. And I thought our next episode we could touch on different aspects from the book. Um, I've only been told a very small portion of what this book is about, and it's about a male uh, in his um, journey to healing um, a global anti-violence movement um, that inspired him. So I'd love to talk about this further. Um, and me, I don't know if you've heard of Matt Brown. He's actually a barber here in New Zealand from the South Island who is talking about his experiences. So we can connect um, after the show. But there's so much that resonates with me in the absolute title itself that we will definitely explore for our next series. So stay tuned. But hey, we're going to end it there. I could go on forever. I know Anne could go on forever. I know TZ could go on forever. Um, but we don't because I've got kids to feed and they're nagging me. 
with my door telling me, Lily, hurry up. <laughs> so, a massive thank you to Unme for your time as well as TZ Created. Bienvenida. <laughs> And uh, we will be back again and stay tuned. Jump on the Healing Well Staying Always YouTube. Like, subscribe, yes, and jump on our social media um, channels and hit us up if you know anybody that needs some advice, um, that maybe needs a bit of cheering up in terms of a bit of guidance and support. Send them our link on YouTube and um, jump on our Facebook um, social media platforms and give us a message we're happy to hear from you and um, help you out have a great evening see you soon have a good one over there in Australia and me um, we, that beautiful uh, sunshine over there adios amigas <laughs> bye see you next time thank you so much bye au revoir <laughs> au revoir <laughs>